All right, this lesson is going to be on scene building. We have our wonderful uh, scenes that we've made, like landscape scenes. This is the beach scene that um, the one I prior I did prior was uh, this beach scene, and then I just stamped the enjoy the journey on it, and I think this is done. I don't think I really need much else. It totally explains what I wanted it to say, right? Um, but so these are the two scenes. Uh, these are some of the cards that I like to make. Uh, here is one that's just a fun scene, I and mean, it looks like a wonderful card that you can give out to, to anybody, a friend. Um, here is a scene with the fairy, and um, it, I love the black stamps, the silhouettes, where you can really see the color come out. Here's another one where I really built an actual scene. I built, I stamped these trees separately, and I stamped this separately, and um, I'm going to show you kind of my process, so I'm just going to show, and then this is an actual real like it's one stamp. I, I say let's get started. Let's see. I want to show you my process because I could just Yeah, let's get started. So I have What I like to use for my scene building any kind of stamping is there's a couple things I I will make these like I said do your color play and then and some afternoon when you have to make some cards or you want to make some cards the guesswork is out of them, so yeah, it might take me like two afternoons to make, I don't know, 15, 10 to 15 card panels, but the stuff is already out. Do them in, do them in like where your stuff's at, right? So I'm not going to do all this special stuff just for one card. I'd rather make a bunch of different card panels and then let those dry and then stamp stamp them and then assemble them um, later. So it's a workflow thing. Whatever works for you is what you should do. I'm not, I'm just sharing my workflow and how I like to really get a bunch of different ones. Get my, <laughs> get my selection of stamps. I got a bunch of them ready to go. And, uh, and then play because you just don't ever know. Um, and then hopefully you'll get some ideas and maybe some things that you haven't thought of this is my hope for this lesson is that you'll get new ideas on how to use brush show with color play. Um, but since this was mostly from the intuitive landscape and then I had my color plays are, these are mostly all from intuitive landscape. I have this color play right here and I have a couple of other just fun color plays that I hope to make into scenes. And if not, then um, we'll find another use for them. Um, but so there you go, just playing with colors and how they mix together on the paper can really create some really fun scenes. So uh, let's get started. For landscapes, I like to use, um, all right, so when we're, when we're working with landscapes, what I like to do is cut, this all needs to be cut for about the last 30 seconds. All right, when we're stamping, I wanted to give you again the rundown of what inks I use. I have my black ink, which these are mostly all done in, is black ink. But I have found that sometimes some colors, some colors and stamps really look good with a brown and sometimes even with a gray, depending on if you want more depth or if you want um, some things done like that. So it really is up to you, um, but these three colors, the black, the light, the gray, this is called watering can, and then potting soil, a brown. Um, in archival ink, I don't think you have to use archival ink because you're not gonna re-wet it, but in my, in my opinion, I think that why buy an extra black ink pad if you don't have to? Which, by the way, I do have more than one black ink pad. But it doesn't really matter as long as it works. So we'll try both of these ink pads just so you guys get an idea. Um, they're both made with dye ink. Uh, so it's not you're not really going to see a difference. But I wanted to just show you so you can know that there's a million different black ink pads out there. As long as you get one that says like hybrid ink or um, the archival ink and remember I put archival black jet ink in here just it's a different label 
Hi, all right, let's get ready to build our scene. I'm gonna start with something easy. This is a simple background stamp. Um, you paint a background and I kind of went a little bit nuts over here with um, some brush -os, so I don't love, love this panel, but I think I can save this panel by using this stamp. So let's, um, let's see what happens. Okay, so I like to, I like to put my, I like to put my card panel kind of in the middle. If you don't have a misty, don't worry too much. You can always use a clear acrylic block and they're much more economical than a misty. And you would just put this stamp on the block like this. And then you, and then I want to make sure that my horizon line is kind of straight. And then I would go ahead and then just stamp my card panel, ink it, ink the stamp and then stamp. And then I would press down really good, and you only get one chance at it, so you'd have to you have you have to make sure your ink pad is really juicy and that the stamp the ink is on the stamp really really good. Um, but because I have a misty, I'm going to use my misty because I really think that a misty is what makes or break breaks these stamps. And I know that this stamp is just a little bit bigger than my card panel, which I'm ha grateful for. Um, and I don't like this edge, so I'm just going to move it over. And then when I get to my assembling part of the card, I can just cut that edge off. And I'm not any worse. So press that down really good. I'm going to ink this panel. We're going to ink this up really, really good. All right, so I got my archival ink. Again, any black ink will work for this. It doesn't have to be waterproof at this point. Um, I use this because this is what I have, but I will show you. All right, that looks really good. It looks very juicy. You can see that there's a lot of black sheen on it, and I think we're good. So let's go ahead and stamp. I'm always thinking, okay, counting to 10 at least more probably if and there's that okay I do like that but I can tell that I need more ink down here and that's why I like my misty that's why I recommend getting a misty if you only have forty dollars to spend on this class and you already have brushos <laughs> get a misty and then <laughs> get a scene stamp because <laughs> they're the best and maybe a sentiment stamp set but all right, I'm really liking that. I'm going to be able to cut this down to about there. And I have this beautiful fall looking card because I was playing with my colors and it just looks like it's part of the card. I just, it's so fantastic and they're so easy to make. And I even have a spot right here for a little sentiment if I wanted to. But honestly, most of my cards that I make like this, I trim that part off a little bit and I might trim the top off and I put it on a card base and then I'll write something on the inside and it works just fine so there's that one all right so to clean your stamps I take rubbing alcohol and I but I don't like lather it on I squirt a little bit and then I have a stamp scrubber tool that I really really like archival ink um, is archival so it's really easy to get it to stain your stamps and a lot of people don't like archival ink because it will stain their stamps I find rubbing alcohol if you do it right cleans the stamp up pretty good um, I'm just showing you once I'm not going to show you a every stamp but um, it's pretty clean and if I wanted to I could go back in and clean it up a little bit more which I'll clean this off because I don't know if that's water or ink but you add a little bit of rubbing alcohol and sometimes I'll let it sit for just a little bit <laughs> and then I'll clean it up. Usually it'll get pretty clean. Yeah. Yep. So it's not black black, but it's not, there's no there's no ink residue that's going to get on to my next project if I wanted to use this stamp for embossing or or whatever I can be certain that this stamp is as clean as it's going to get put it back on my 
thing and I'm ready to go for the next one. All right, so when you're using clear acrylic stamps that don't have the rubber and the, there's two parts to a stamp. There's the, the, like the rubber part and then there's this padding right here. The clear stamps don't usually have padding to go with it. So there's the padding. Uh, so because of that, you gotta have this, you gotta make padding. And so the Misty came out with um, a padding that you just put underneath. So instead of it being part of the stamp, you just use it underneath and it works just fine. So that's what I'm gonna do. Okay, so what I like about clear stamps and what I really like about Lavinia stamps are that you can really just see exactly where you want your panel to be. And so I'm going to take this off. I just think this fairy is so cute. And I think I really want the, the black to stand out. So I'm just trying to see where... I could put it, I think I'll put it right like this. And that way I have a little bit of space to use my little, my little, um, whatever, dandelion seed to kind of blow off. So let's, let's do this, huh? And I really like this panel because it has all the colors to it and I just think it'll look really neat. So I'm going to go ahead and stick that there. I can tell that this is a little bit sticky. So if your stamp sticks to your paper, I use the like my inside of my arm and I just like give it a nice little gentle rub <laughs> like this. Um, it's a technical <laughs> anyways um, and then I'll stamp and that the oil from my arm it shouldn't stick to the paper see how it doesn't stick before it was sticking a little bit so um, now I know I'll get a good clean stamp and new stamps like this I've only used it once will do that so if you get a new stamp and it sticks a little bit you just want to use your arm I'm sure there's other methods but the arm works pretty well for me <laughs> and I'm putting pressure down and I'm holding for about five seconds so then the pigment the dye will actually get onto the paper all right let's see sometimes you have to do two and I think I will do another one The, when you put your magnets on, it keeps the paper from staying, so you don't have to worry about the paper. There, I like that. That will work. Okay, now, now I'm going to use this little guy right here, this little stamp right here. Now, if I was a, I don't know, if I was a very perfectionist, I would use a clear acrylic block and put this on here and stamp but I find that my finger for stuff like this works just fine and then I move my paper to where my finger is so I'm not trying to move my finger to where I want it to be but I'm going to put this one right here I'll put this one like right here and because I want some of them to look like they're fading off I'll make that lighter I'll make this one lighter too because they're blowing away. They don't have to be as... And then I think... I think I'll put some more falling down this way. And again, lighter right here. And Yeah, I think I'll do just one more right there. I'm going to call that done. I'm going to call this card panel done. And what a fun card panel that is. Isn't that beautiful? I really like that. Okay, let's move on to a different one.
Let's go back to another Lavinia stamp, and I have a couple. I have a couple more now. Um, I just used this one, but I'm going to try it again because I really like this one, and I think other people will like this too. I'm going to put this more like right here. So I'm very carefully laying it down because there's still ink on the stamp. I don't want the ink to smush around too much. I'm going to take my magnets and I'm going to really get them close to, and you can even almost tape the card panel down if you really feel like it. But usually my, my, my magnets work pretty good. So we'll do this again, and maybe we need some trees in the background. We have, haven't decided yet. Tell I'm gonna like this one better. <laughs> yep. One more. Sometimes it does take three tries to stamp it perfect. There, that's dark and perfect. And then let's go with because I want to build a tree. I want to I want to have a tree kind of off in the distance. But I think, I think it's going to be gray and I don't want the whole tree on here. So I'm just going to maybe just put one like right there. I'm going to take this off because I don't necessarily need that on anymore. Put that where I need to clean my stamps. And then I can even to really make sure it doesn't go anywhere. I'm going to do that ink this up with some gray because I don't I can always go darker but I can't go lighter so if I don't like it as a as a black tree I can always add black to it but I can't take away <laughs> so start light if you're not quite sure <laughs> which I'm not and I think I like that there we go okay that might be that I need to stamp it twice We'll see. Yep, I'm definitely going to have to stamp that twice. And it's just going to give a nice... Because I don't want it to overpower the... There. <laughs> and then... I'm going to take, I had some grass, but maybe I just want to add a little bit of leaves right here. So let's do that. And I'm not actually going, I'm just going to stamp a little bit right there. This is where the art comes in. And very gently, I'm just going to stamp that and go around maybe to the other. I just want that little bit of border down. So it gives it some depth. So what I'm doing is I'm just stamping part of the stamp. And then I'm pressing it down like that. And I think I want a little bit more. I want more depth. There. Maybe just a tiny bit more. Maybe she's... I mean, so I like to use what I have. And you can tell that I've done this before because my inky fingerprints get on, on this. But it's still really fun, and I like it. Now you could do like gray and then black if you really wanted more depth. Um, 
I'm not always particular, I guess. And then one more, because I know that I still have some ink. And we got this really fun, there, there we go. I like that. And then if I wanted to, I could add more of those little, more of these. And instead of doing black, maybe I want to just do the gray. Because the gray will also look really neat with, yeah, I almost like the gray better for the little <laughs> dandelion seeds. I'll do a couple fall into the ground. There we go. I like that. I think that's I think that's gonna I think that's a beautiful card right there. I think someone's gonna love it. So um, use what you have. Find edges that you think will work for your stamp and do the bottom. And this totally works for. Or use your um, use like a, some black sumi ink and just make some grasses or some leaves if you feel like you're a good enough artist to make those leaves or whatever. Um, but I just say use what you have, right? That's how creativity is made. <laughs> but that's a beautiful card. And all from just color play. Okay, I'm going to clean up my mess that I made. So that was quite a mess. Oh, better. Much better. <laughs> And that was just rubbing alcohol. All right. Let's move on. I think let's keep working with Lavinia stamps. And this time we're going to build another scene. And I really like this fairy. This fairy looks like she's having fun. <laughs> and maybe I want her to be right here like that and then later we'll add the trees we'll add we'll add a tree maybe we'll add a tree here like this and here like that I don't know yet well that's the fun part is just learning what we want to do I like having the fairy um, closer to the left because she's looking towards the right so I can always add more but your eyes the fairy wings will draw your eyes right to here and then you your eyes gonna go this way so if I had it over this way all I'm gonna see probably because this is my focal point is this fairy right here I'm not gonna really notice here so what I could also do is if I didn't want trees in the way if I didn't want trees right here I could put a nice sentiment right here and I do have a nice sentiment um, from Lavinia stamps um, but I think it's just a little bit too big so I would want to find a sentiment that's not so big and I really like this fairy so I don't want to um, move it anywhere so <laughs> it's all about composition and finding what works so but we have other sentiments that we can use and I'm not quite worried about it yet so we're gonna go ahead and stamp this fairy And I'm going to use my black ink. All right. Take the fairy one away. Get my skeleton tree up. It must be winter. <laughs> I really like 
like that one. And then I'm going to move this. I can always go in with a pen if I thought I needed to, but there's that. Now I do like using maybe a little more, um, I'm going to use this border again and I'm just going to stamp it where I think I need to. And I think I might just play around. some right there I'm gonna add some more right here yeah I do find that I need to have a juicy ink pad for this Yeah, there we go. I like that. I don't like this spot right there, so I'm going to add a little bit more ink or something. What I'll probably do is just do this little corner thing right here and see if that will help it. It does. I'll do that again. Maybe right there. There we go. I like that. Perfect. And look, now we have a perfect card and if I wanted to I could take I like this I don't know if I would change it at all I really like how these trees kind of work together and it looks like she's flying kind of out of a like she's landing on a fair on some grassy leaves or something I don't know it looks very autumny to me I think it's beautiful okay clean up my mess again because you know I'm messy Sometimes all you need is just one step, and this might be it, because I really, really, really like this. I remember painting this and not loving the, the outcome at first, but I think with the right stamp, it will totally work. Yeah, that's going to look really nice. So, like I said, like start with a couple stamp sets that you love, and then go from there. I'm going to stamp the fairy one more time. She seems to need a lot of ink. <laughs> I like that. I don't even know if I need those little, oh, you know, these little seeds. Maybe I will add a couple. going right there <laughs> whoops oh to make that better we'll just do that there that'll work we'll just make a little collage of seeds going less is more always there we go I like that that'll work paper you just gotta have a lot of ink on your paper on your stamp so 
so it's not the stamp it's the paper the paper takes up a lot of ink and so the one thing I will say is when I say buy a re-inker it's because you do go through more ink with watercolor paper than you would with um, other things now I did have that nice little grassy strip but I don't know where it went so instead of trying to look for it we'll use my my thing again and why not we know it works why mess with something if we know it works And then I think what I'll do is I'm going to I'm going to stamp this this other tree right here right like that but with gray so it looks like it's almost in the distance my stamp pad after using black and gray because it's <laughs> it's like the same tone and I'm not really expecting a big huge difference but there you go oh see that's even prettier I just think you could do this all day it'll it's just so much fun and stamp with gray or stamp with black this is black jet black still and then this is where my magic comes in. And this time I am very particular. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right. Let's see. Woohoo! I think I can do one more. It hasn't moved, and I really want these trees to be dark. If I was worried, I could always just let it let that ink be but I'm gonna give it another try <laughs> see what happens there we go I like that okay I'm not gonna change stamps out because I want to I want a couple of these anyways so I know that I'm about two squares up two squares in I'm ready to go. There we go. And one more. put my wolf down about here and I'm going to eat up as much as I can on this stamp all right it's really inky hoping I only need one one shot at this and But I'm going to need another pass. It's just the way the paper is. The paper is super absorbent because you want that for the pigment. But the bad part about it is <laughs> the ink. It just soaks up all the ink. And I don't know of a good way to... And it still needs... I want my wolf to be really, really dark. But it just takes... It just takes that time to... I'm not pressing. Yeah, there we go. 
I like that. Oh, there's your scene. Isn't that gorgeous? Isn't that beautiful? I love the sky and it just makes for a wonderful, wonderful stamp image. So there's that one. All right, let's try this one. Should we try the wolf again or should we try the tree? Let's see. I got two more. So I can do one more wolf and one more tree. Or let's do... I really like this guy in this one, so let's do the wolf there and we'll do the tree for that one. And I know that my wolf was there, so if I, yeah, that'll work. Okay. Beautiful. <laughs> I just find these, you can make a whole bunch of these really easy if you get the right stamp. And I tell you, stamps are worth every penny. When you get a good stamp that you love, like this, like these two stamps, the Silhouette Forest and then the, the Wolf. There, it's so perfect. It's not done yet because I'm going to cut these edges off, right, and um, polish it up a little bit, but that is going to look, that's a beautiful card. I like these cards for uh, sympathy, thinking of you, birthday cards for males, um, like encouragement cards, especially for males. I always think, oh, guys don't need cards, but I think guys like cards. I don't know. And it just depends on how you design it. Uh, so there's this, there's the, <laughs> there's one way, here's another way that I'm going to be able to play with my stamps. All right, I got my, and this is kind of the same thing, it's very black and silhouetted, and um, it just makes for a really fun tree. So I did have to kind of look where I wanted the where I wanted the horse at so I just put my finger kind of where my, the horse is gonna start and then I do that okay I feel pretty good that the horse is right where I need it to be um, because I played with the stamp I know that I don't want the horse to get into this black but I want it to have a little bit of space so I'm giving it some room to to be a horse because if I don't give it enough, or if I don't give this head enough room and it gets over here, it's going to look funny. And I don't want that. So there's the reason. And again, I really want this horse to stand out, so it's going to be the darkest. Maybe a little bit more. There, I like that. <laughs> 